Hello students, welcome back to your English class. I hope you are all set and excited for the next chapter that we are going to read. And this chapter, especially for those pet lovers and animal lovers who feel a lot of affection towards the animals in their house or the animals around them. So the chapter is titled The Bond of Love. Take a look at this picture. Does this affectionate picture remind you of a little pet that you have or had or a pet that you would want to have? Now this story is about a lady and her pet sloth bear. A little different. These days we only have pets in uh, like dogs, cats or birds. But this lady's pet bear, uh, pet is a bear. And you think a bear or a tiger is good enough pet? But in this case you will find out that he is. Okay? You are going to read about that beautiful relationship between humans and animals. The chapter's title is The Bond of Love and the writer's, writer is Kenneth Anderson. Now this is a non-fiction chapter. Okay? This is a real story. Kenneth Anderson hailed from a Scottish family. He lived from 1910 to 1974. He was settled in India from six generations and he was superintendent in Pune. His father was and he dealt with salaries paid to military personnel. Now Kenneth Anderson has written lots of books, Man Eaters and Jungle Killers, The Call of the Man Eater and the chapter that you are going to read is The Bond of Love. Now let's find out what slot, sloth bears are. Before we begin the chapter you should at least know what kind of pet the lady has. So this is a sloth bear. This is the muzzle. These words are there in your chapter. So you should take a look at this picture and try and understand them. This is the muzzle. The shaggy hair. The claws. Okay. I hope you all understand. This is the sloth bear distribution in India. These are the places where you find the sloth bear in India. Okay. Their main food is termites. These are termite hills. And these are termites. Sloth bears love to eat termites. Let's start the chapter now. Now the narrator and his friends have gone hunting. They are in sugarcane fields near Mysore. And by chance they see a bear mother coming out of the fields. One of the friends with the author, he spots the sloth bear and kills the mother, shoots the mother. But... They don't realize that over her body there is a small cub. The narrator caught that cub and gifted that cub to his wife. Narrator's wife was very happy to receive that cub and she named him Bruno. Bruno would eat porridge, vegetables and fruits. He would eat nuts, meat, rice, eggs and he lived a happy life with the lady. There were two main incidents that were mentioned in the chapter. Once the narrator had put some rat poison in the library and Bruno went there and ate it. Since Bruno's size was so big, Bruno was literally unhurt. But he started becoming paralyzed. His lower part of the body stopped working and Bruno had to drag himself on his upper part to come and tell someone that this happened to him. Then he was taken to a veterinary doctor and he was treated for it. Another time Bruno drank one gallon of old engine oil but it had no effect on him. Again the size of the animal helped him survive it. Bruno was also named Baba. Baba is a term used in India in affection for little children. How are you Baba? So that kind of name was given to Bruno because the lady loved Bruno like a child. He learned some tricks and he would perform them just like a dog, you know. If you tell a dog, sit, stand, roll. Similarly, Bruno would also perform those tricks when the lady commanded him. He could also hold a stick like a gun. When the lady said wrestle or box, he would wrestle and the name was later changed to Baba. But as Baba grew in size, he became bigger than the two dogs that were in the household and the people around feel 
felt scared. So they suggested and they told the narrator and his wife to send Bruno to the zoo in Mysore because now Bruno needed more bigger space and open space. So narrator's wife, they had to send Bruno to a zoo. But the lady loved Bruno to the core. She was in grief and for weeks she felt sorry and she wrote a letter to the curator of the zoo to know more about Bruno. The curator also replied, the person in the zoo who was taking care of Bruno also replied that Bruno is unhappy. Bruno is also missing the lady as much as the lady is missing Bruno. So finally the narrator took the pain and effort because he realized that the two of them were inseparable and they were not happy away from each other. So the narrator decided to get Bruno back. Not yet, first he takes the lady to the zoo. And some of her friends told her that Baba would not recognize her. But when she went to the zoo, Baba immediately recognized her and they, they sat together for three hours. So people thought that since Bruno is a wild animal, he is a sloth bear, he would not recognize the lady when she would go and see him. But Bruno recognized her and he was so happy to see her. She gave him food and she urged the curator to send Baba with her, but he was helpless and suggested her to ask the superintendent for that. So the lady said, please let me take him back. But the curator of the zoo said he didn't have the power to send Baba back. He sent the lady and her husband to the superintendent. The husband went to the superintendent and took permission to take Bruno back. The superintendent allowed her to take Baba and Baba was put on the top of the car, hoisted on top of the car, obviously in a cage or something and he was made to sit there. When he got back home, a 20 feet long and 15 feet wide island was built for him. Just like you see in zoos where there is a moat and moat is what? Uh, you dig it out and fill water in it so that the animal cannot come out. So an island was made which was 20 into 15 feet and Bruno was made to be there and the lady had made some arrangement for herself by which she would go inside that island and she would sit with Bruno and have her time with her. A wooden box was kept for Baba and he was happy to be home again. Narrator's wife and Baba spent many hours sitting together. So this is the story about such a wild animal from whom you do not expect any sort of affection or love but the amount of affection Baba had for narrator's wife is exceptional. So this kind of love is the love that we should have for animals. And that is what this chapter wants to teach us, that humans and animals should have this kind of a bond of love so that we have the special arrangement between both animals and humans to grow and let nature also grow. These are the difficult words from your chapter. Escaped is got away. Panting is breathing noisily, wanton is for no good reason, promptly, very quickly, beast is used for animal, prostrate is lying face down on the ground, scooted is run away, to grab is to catch, and scruff is the back part of the neck. Time for some home assignment. I hope you understood the chapter well. It's a very easy chapter. It's a non-fiction chapter, a real life story of a person who did have such a beautiful bond with the animal. Now home assignment, I would want you to write a paragraph about your favorite pet. The kind of bond you shared with your pet. If you do not have a pet, then you will imagine one and you will think that what kind of a pet you want and what kind of a relationship you want with your pet. Okay? All the best children. Thank you.